Okay, so as promised, we're now going to work through a variety of examples of computing the frequency response for different systems. So the very first one will work right here. I just called it frequency response. And we're gonna start off very simply here. What we're going to do is we are going to compute the frequency response for the LTI system, linear time invariant system, described by this discrete time difference equation right here. So that is a temporal time domain description of the system. We wanna know what the frequency response of this system is. So we wanna know what h of omega is. That's by definition the frequency response. We'll then also compute the magnitude of h of omega. That's what we call the amplitude response. And we'll compute the angle of h of omega. That's what we call the phase response of the system. So as a first step in doing that, we wanna take this time domain difference equation into the z domain. So that's, my, that's what I decided to do anyway. So just term by term, transform that into the z domain. y of k turns into y of z y of k minus 1 is y of z times z to the minus 1. So if you don't remember that property, go back on the channel. There are tons of examples of how to do the z transform of signals. But in general, a shift k minus 1 introduces the polynomial term z to the minus 1. So that is the z domain term corresponding to this time domain term. And then finally, on the right side of the equation, x of k turns into x of z. Now I can factor things out a little bit. On the left, there's a y of z on both those terms. So if I factor out y of z, I end up with that. That is equal to x of z. And now divide both sides by x of z and divide both sides by that term. We can then isolate the ratio y of z over x of z, which is by definition the transfer function of the system. And that is equal to one over this term over here. So I have now found the transfer function of my system, which is good for any number z that's in the region of convergence of the system. Now if I let z equal e to the j omega, I'm basically, basically going to evaluate this on the unit circle. I can get out the frequency response of the system h of omega, and that really means just replace every single z with e to the j omega. In this case, it's pretty simple because there's only a single z. So when I replace z to the minus 1 with e to the j omega, I get e to the minus j of omega and this is the frequency response of the system. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and compute the magnitude of this quantity and the phase of this quantity, so we'll have nice analytic expressions for those as well. So in terms of the amplitude response, we're going to take the magnitude of h of omega. There's h of omega right there from the previous page. In this case, it might be helpful to go ahead and you know replace the e to the minus j omega in terms of a cosine plus j sine. Um, Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. It just takes kind of practice to know kind of how you want to do that. That's what I decided to do in this case, though. And then once you've broken it down like that, you can group it into the real component plus the imaginary component. Sometimes that's a very useful thing to do when trying to take magnitudes and phases. So let's go ahead and compute the magnitude of that quantity. So we take the magnitude of the numerator, 1, and then we also take the magnitude of the denominator, that is equal to, well, the magnitude of 1 is just 1. That's pretty easy. And then anytime you're dealing with complex numbers written in kind of rectangular form, it's computing the magnitude is easy. Just think of it as what's the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle. So it's going to be the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared added up and then the square root of those terms. So kind of the root sum squared of the rectangular component. So I square that and I square that and I add them up and I put it inside a radical on the denominator. This now simplifies quite a little bit. So there's kind of the basic identity I just did more generally, but that's a kind of a good thing to remember. This simplifies quite a bit. If I just kind of write out what's on the denominator right now and I multiply all this out, you'll see what happens. I end up with one minus 1 1.6 cosine of omega. I end up with a cosine squared term. I also end up with a sine squared term. And now notice both the cosine squared and the sine squared have the exact same coefficient. So I can factor that out and write cosine squared plus sine squared, and we know what cosine squared plus sine squared is. It's just 1. So that simplifies algebraically nicely, and now I just have 1.64 minus that cosine term. So in this case, I think it was nice to break it down in terms of cosine and sine because the denominator simplified quite a bit, and now I have kind of a nicer expression, so to speak, for the amplitude response, and there it is right there.
All right, so that is a nice expression for the amplitude response. Let's go ahead and do a similar thing for the phase response. There again was how we started on the first slide of this video, and we want to compute the angle of that quantity. In general, anytime you're computing the angle of a ratio, it's the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator. So that's what we're going to use right here. Let me go ahead and break the frequency response down into real and imaginary components on the denominator, just like we did on the last slide. In terms of the angle of the numerator, 1 is a real valued number. It doesn't have an angle. So the angle of the numerator is, in fact, 0. And now we need to subtract off the angle of the denominator. Again, just a refresher, anytime you're dealing with rectangular kind of coordinates, x plus jy, just think of the triangle. The angle of that is tangent inverse of y over x. So it's the tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent. Just basic trig there. So here, my imaginary compart is 0.8 sine of omega. So that is going to go up as the y component. And then my real component x is 1 minus 0.8 cosine of omega. It is that. And then that really doesn't simplify a ton in this case. There's no nice trig or anything that simplifies. I can get rid of the zero there. And that is the phase response expression. So now I have an expression for both the amplitude response and the phase response as a function of omega. I can now go plot these on my calculator or plot them in MATLAB as desired. All right, so that was the first example out of four we're going to work. We'll get to the next system response example in the next video.